In this week here, we're gonna talk about AI agent tools. So this is pretty much just how we give an AI agent access to different functions, tool sets, and so on. That could be pretty much anything. So agents, they use tools to take actions, but also interact with internal systems. So tools are pretty much just functions that an agent can run to achieve tasks. Could, for example, be web search, running database commands, sending emails, Slack notifications, calling APIs and so on. So any function and API can be a tool because we can always just wrap around and function it could be a Python function. We can just specify that that could be a tool. We can give that function to the agent as a tool set. So if we have a tool set, then the AI agents based on the prompt and the user query, it can determine which tools to use to solve specific tasks that it's giving. So tools and NTP servers, they also go hand in hand. NTP servers will be covered more in a dedicated video where we pretty much just go fully into details what MTP servers are, but it's basically just a server with access to different tools. Could be GitHub, so it could be like create a new pull request, go through errors and all that, and it could also be like merging, doing commits, messages, and all that. Tools is very important when we're talking about AI agents. Here are some more examples before we're going to jump into Python and see how we can basically just get some tools running with an agent so we can determine which one to use. So any function you can write in code can be a tool. Some pretty cool examples for search could be Google search. So your agent has access to internet access. Could be that you want to create a booking agent. Say, tell the agent when you want to book, what country, what it needs to look out for and so on. It's going to do the web search. Could be that there's APIs to other different booking services that it can go in and access through tools. Archive, Wikipedia, social media here could be send email notifications, Slack notifications, Telegram, Discord, and so on. So maybe it does some research and sends you a report every day on email. So this is a very cool use case. And again, we can just spin up the agent. It understands from the user intent what it is. It chooses what tool to use, it solves the task, and then it can give you the results back. Web scraping, agent QL can go through any website and so on, crawl for AI, fire crawl, data. It can have data access through tools as well, so CSV files, pandas, Postgres, SQL databases, and so on. So it can basically run SQL commands from the user query. You can tell it to extract whatever information that you have in your tables and in your databases. Could be local, interaction with Docker, your file system, Python can run code execution as well. The shell, other toolkits here could be any API. Any API would be able to be a tool to an AI agent, AVS Lambda, GitHub, Google Maps, Google Calendar, Jira, Finance, YouTube. So these are just some of the tools that you can combine together to do like personal assistant. Could set up like whole workflows for your businesses. Very good for automation. So you can tell the agent what to do. It will figure out how to solve the task based on the tool set that it has, and then it can give you the results back. So we're just jumping straight into my code editor to see how we can give tools. We're going to use the ACNO framework where we can import different tools, but we can also have a Python function. It's very easy to set up with the ACNO framework. For example, if we scroll a bit further down, right now, let's just grab the first example. So this is how we create an agent. I'm just going to comment out all the other stuff here for now. So we're going to set up the model. We specify we want to use GPT 4.0 mini. We have our API key and now we got DocDocGo tools, which basically just means that it has internet access. There's also Brave Search and all that, but there's hundreds of tools directly out of the box with Acno as well. And then in just a second, we're going to see how we can wrap up our own functions and give agents access to our functions through tools. Show tool calls, so it's going to output what tools and actions is it going to take and also markdown format. So we get a report out in the terminal of everything the agent is doing. Then we can run the agent here and just print the response. You can also just call dot run and it will run it without printing it. But what's happening in today's world, we set stream to true. So it doesn't just wait until it has generated the results, but it streams the results in real time or live as you do with ChatGPT and so on. So let's go down here. We just run Python agent tools. Let's save it, agent tools.py. Let's run it. And now it's just going to ask the message what's happening in today's world. It decides to use this tool here, Dr. Go News. It will go in and query the latest news and we're just going to take the max results, which is five. Now it's generating the response here. We can see all the timing and everything. But if you have multiple tools, you can have tens, 
hundreds of tools assigned to your agents. Maybe you'll have different agents then where you have one agent for communication, one agent for research that has tools to Wikipedia, Google search and all that. And this is basically just how we connect set up AI agent systems together. So this is the output that it gets out. This is just how we can create an LLM with internet access through tools. So Trump says India and Pakistan agree to ceasefire. We have some other different news here. This is pretty much just what we get out. It's just pulling the latest news. This is very cool. It's just a few lines of code when we use the Agno framework. So let's now try to make it even more complicated or not even more complicated, for, but implement more features into it. So now we have a function here that's basically just called get weather. Here in here, you will actually connect to a weather API and then you will return a result. Right now, we just have placeholders to see how it works. So it's just going to return this, but you can set up anything inside of this function. You can call any API, any database connection, any calculation, anything that you want to do in here. You can even wrap multiple functions in here. Just when this function get called, we have this input from the query and then we get the output response back, which is going to use to generate the output response as well. So we just have the decorator, tool decorator. We want to show the results and we want to stop after we have called this tool. We might not want to use this if we have multiple tools running at the same time. Now we just go down, create the exact same agent, but instead of the doc, 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 go tool, we just get our get weather because we have the tool decorator up at the top. So any function can just be put in here and it will have access to that. So we could even go in and extend it to doc, doc, go tools. So it has multiple tools. So what is the weather in San Francisco? Let's try to see what tool it chooses based on that one. Let's rerun our agent. What is the weather in San Francisco? It has access to two, two tools. It uses the get weather. And now it's automatically going from the user's intent, going to find out what is the city that the user is looking for because it needs to take this input argument. It both reasons about what tool to use, but also what are the input arguments to that function. So it finds from the prompt here, San Francisco, and it figures out we want to call the get weather function. And now we can see that the weather in San Francisco is sunny. So we're just going to grab a random weather condition here and throw it into our string at the end and return that. So just from these lines of code, we're able to run a custom Python function, assign that as a tool to our agent. The agent chooses to use this tool over the doc.go tool. And it also extracts that we were interested in San Francisco and know the weather for that. While it's doing the results, so we're getting live responses from our agent as well. This is very, very cool to do. We can see how easy it is to set up agents. So it's way more connecting multiple agents together, act like build software systems around it. It's much more about the software system than the AI agent itself. You need to figure out the architecture and all that, which is the complex part. A lot of other frameworks, they make it much harder to just get all of this up and running, but Agno is pretty good for that one. Let's go down and take an even more crazy example here just to end it off with. There we go. I think this should be all of it. Yeah. So now we have a get top hack and new stories. We can specify we want to use the number of stories to 10. But again, we can act, act like just specify that in our function call or the agent will figure that out automatically. So this is act like going in and extracting this from the website. So this is calling a website, HTTPX, could be an API call and so on as well. This is just to show that we can create even more complex Python functions, which can be a tool for an agent. So this is just pulling all the news, hacker news from this website and just dumps it into JSON with different stories. We have our tool again, we create our agent, then we print a response, give me the top five stories of hacker news and summarize them. We can run the agent with print response. So it's just going to print the results. We can run it with our agent run here. Then we just get our response back here. We can also set streaming and it will have an iterator with our response that we can then iterate over and basically just print the results. So here we have a response stream coming back. This will just be a single variable that we get back. Here we'll get an iterator. So it's basically just a list or we basically just get them step by step while it's generating. So yeah, let's just test out these different these different ones. So this is just how to do an agent run. It's also going to run the agent here, but just going to print the results. In the previous video, we talked about agent sessions, memory, how to act like just keep all this information so you can do multiple conversations, how you can have systems that support multi-users, multi-sessions and so on. How can multiple users access the same agents at the same time? How can we store conversation history for 
each year and so on. So it's much more about combining all these things together to act like build AI agent systems. Let's try to run this. Let's try to see what we get out at the results. Here we can actually just see the results. It gets the tool called get top hack and new stories. It throws in five. So the default one was 10. It reasons and throw in five based on the query. It chooses to choose to use the tool. And here we can see the output results, which is actually just streaming step by step. This is pretty awesome. This is how we build AI systems with AI agents. And this is how you can use tools with AI agents. This is a bit longer video, but also very important because this is actually like what gives the AI agents the AI functionality or the agent functionality compared to just a large language model call. So here it has access to multiple tools. It does the reasoning, it extracts what input parameters do I need to throw into this function? What functions do I have available to solve this task? So you don't specify what, what tools should it actually gonna use. It's not just hard coded, a hard coded pipeline with LLMs chain together. This is actually like a reasoning AI agent system with access to multiple tools. It takes actions, it reasons, it takes actions, it solves the task, and then you, it gives you the results back. This is the direction where AI agents and just AI large language models and all that is heading, both for computer vision, AI agents, and so on in general. We can see how easy it is with the Agno framework. So it's much more about combining all these things together, solve real use cases. How can we make it scalable? How can we build it into a real software system?